Hello, my beautiful Pisces friends, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2020. And Pisces, this month, right out of the gate, I can tell you your fourth house is extremely powerful this month. So the fourth house is home, family, real estate, property, but it is also a really nice place of beginnings and psychological beginnings, psychological foundations. So I can tell you, as we travel through this month, the place of your psychological foundation, the psychological fitness, what makes you feel emotionally secure and steady and grounded, this is on tap for your development this month. Of course, when there's a heavy fourth house month or time going on for you as well, it could indicate a move or a change to your housing situation in some way, shape, or form. So we'll definitely explore and be open to the idea that that could be something that's going on as well, okay? Let's jump in here, Pisces, and look at this month because we have also got retrograde activity out of the wazoo. 40% of our planets are gonna be moving in retrograde. So this will also slow the flow of some things down as well, which I happen to think is really a good indicator to you getting this um, internal psychological foundational situation sorted this month. It's a good month to kind of take it easy. Let be what needs to be, make some peace, do some grounding, get in touch with you know, your ancestry, get in touch with whatever roots you. This is a good month for that. Okay, right at the beginning of the month, we're going to have a full moon on the 7th in the energy of Scorpio. Now, this is a fellow water sign, so a little bit of relatability is happening between you and this particular sign. This is going to light up your ninth house space. Now, the ninth house is publishing, broadcasting, marketing, higher education, higher thinking. It is also the house of faith. And it is also the house of travel, especially international travel. Now, you have to be open-minded here. We're in quarantine, so don't be narrow-minded. I mean, do that if you feel like it, but don't be narrow-minded here. Think pretty big about this. Travel. Some people will be out in the world traveling this month. There will be Pisces who are not quarantined and locked down or whatever. So that may look like some travel in that regard, but travel can also be that you are studying something from a foreign land or you are speaking with people who are foreign from you and you're doing it in a way that allows you to travel. We travel on the internet, right? We come from my house all the way to your house, wherever you are. So be very open-minded when you hear the word travel this month, instead of closing your mind to, no, we're all shut down, we can't travel, right? Now, the full moon happening in this particular area, the full moon says, okay, in that area of travel, education, faith, expansion, broadcasting, we need to end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment. So there is a shift that this moon is trying to bring in, and it's going to do it with Scorpio qualities. So that means in this area of your life, your deepest desires and the struggles that you have achieving those desires are going to be lit up. So you can literally see where your power is struggling. Where are you standing in your own way to making this area of your life as deep and juicy and transformative as you would like it to be? I also think for some of you, um, this is certainly an energy where the travel, it's almost like I want to say, go ahead and launch that podcast. Go ahead and, and have courage and transform. You're going to have to take some action in order to transform this area to help you travel, whether it's yourself, a message, a book, your mind, whatever it is. Use the full moon for your travel and expansion purposes, okay? On the 11th, it's a busy day. We're going to see Mercury moving into the energy of Gemini where he's in domicile. He's at home, so he is good to go over there. And it will light up your fourth house. So the fourth house is starting to get big and busy right here with movement within the month. Now, it's already busy because we've got Venus over there, but movement within this month starts right here on the 11th. Now, also... We are going to see Saturn go into retrograde on the 11th, and this is going to retrograde between your 12th and your 11th houses because Saturn's going to start this retrograde in the energy of Aquarius and then leave it in the energy of Capricorn. So let's talk about this Gemini in Mercury placement first. Let's talk about this Mercury in Gemini placement first. My goodness. Now, Mercury and Gemini in the fourth house, first of all, makes the home the center of conversation, the center of communication. Maybe you're having lots of conversations with your family. Gemini is also a detail-oriented energy, and Mercury is business savvy. So for some of you, truly, you could be signing a new lease, 
um, changing your home, moving someplace, doing something like that, and the details have been worked out, the travel arrangements have been made, whatever it is, you could definitely have some communication that is changing where you live. But you could also be changing where, you're, where you live by moving things around, by saying, oh, I wanna freshen up this space, by saying, oh yeah, if I'm gonna travel this month, I better make sure that my technological pieces of equipment are good to go, right? So any of these things are gonna bring a busyness and a better sense of communication and connection into your home. It helps to make the home very social. All right, so if you need to make any home level decisions, I feel like this is the time you can start doing this in the month because Mercury is savvy and he does wanna make decisions with and for you. Saturn's retrograde, what we've got going on here is that first of all, as Saturn begins its retrograde at this one degree of Aquarius, right? You've been seeing this. You've been seeing some clean out, some transition, some culmination in your life over this last couple of years. You've been cleaning out this shadow closet, the spirit closet. You've been cleaning out things that have been hitting. You've been developing a spiritual practice and getting very serious about that, right? Now, as Saturn is going to retrograde back into this Capricorn energy, this is where you're going to go back and say, do I have the right kind of friends? You're going to do an evaluation, a re-evaluation of your friends, the organizations you're aligned with, your support groups, your long-range plans and goals for yourself. And the question you're going to ask yourself, especially if you discover that you don't have friends that are really supporting your vision, if you don't have the right tribe to be aligned with, um, I think you're gonna move away from that over this next five months. I think you get the courage to move away from that. But I also think here too, because Saturn really wants you to be serious. He does not wanna leave this area until you have really refined and been crystallized in the lessons here, because the foundation is solid to build on when Saturn leaves here. So I think he's asking you to be serious about your future. Right? As you go forward, who are the people? What are the social things? In social media, if this is your business, which are your strongest platforms to be working from and on? Either way, Saturn over this next five months is going to help you review that. Saturn will begin the retrograde at one degree of Aquarius. It will end at 25 degrees of Capricorn. So make sure you note that on your chart. The 13th is another busy day this month. We see Mars moving into the energy of Pisces. So coming into your sign, which I'm gonna tell you out of the gate, make sure you're moving your body because Mars can make you exhausted, right? So you wanna make sure you're moving your body to expel some of that Mars energy so you're not exhausted and restless and underhydrated or dehydrated or anything like that, okay? Now also we're gonna see Venus go into retrograde that same day as well. Now Mars here in Pisces, this is not a very active Active position but Mars is still Mars he just comes with an ample amount of boom 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 you know what I mean now in your sign I think it is the question of what do you want to do where do you want to go what are you putting your effort what are you putting your energy into what do you have desires to do to see to investigate right Mars wants to go and do these things so wherever you would like to be in motion Mars would like to take you there now in Pisces Mars is sometimes kind of indecisive because it's very in between the worlds so you can even give him an in between the worlds answer I would like to do yoga I would like to be with my animals. I would like to be outside with my toes in nature. I would like to feel the breeze. Mars, come with me. I would like to garden, right? Whatever it is, you can do the Pisces. Oh, I'd like to draw. I'd like to write music. Whatever it is, take Mars to do Piscean things, and this will be the best use of this energy, okay? Now, as Venus is moving into this retrograde, she's going to begin the retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini and end it at 5 degrees of Gemini. Now, this is, again, all lighting up the fourth house space for you. So this is home, family, real estate, property. And as Venus is retrograding here, you may be going back over this area. You may be going back. Venus is phenomenal for bringing back in the fourth house, not just romantic relationships, but family members, um, things from the past, things from childhood, and it brings it to your attention to say, do these things still have value, right? What's the value that I'm carrying these around? So do they have value? So Venus is going to ask you to look at the value of things in, on, and around your home, including the financials and the relationships involved in your home. In your home, are you financially steady? You know, if something were to happen, are you good to go? Because if not, Venus retrograde is still a serious time to answer these 
these questions and get yourself prepared, right? Financially, if the bottom falls out, can you take care of yourself? If not, Venus will show you, she'll back you up and say, okay, let's learn about passive income. Let's learn about this. Let's learn about this. Let's learn about this. New relationships. Um, new relationships are a challenge, but relationships that have already been established usually get some work during the Venus retrograde as well. But it is all about value. She wants you to have the best value available to you in this particular area of your life. On the 14th, Jupiter is going to hit his retrograde and Jupiter is going to be retrograding through your 11th house. Now a Jupiter retrograde, I really enjoy this because what Jupiter says here is he's like, hey, I need you to take an honest evaluation of your strengths and your weaknesses at a social level. 11th house, friends, organizations, social media, um, technology, online things, long range plans and goals. He's like, I need you to be honest and look at your strengths and look at your weaknesses. Because what happens is as Jupiter is out of retrograde, we've been presenting ourselves overly confident in this area based on what we can actually deliver, right? So it's like over promise, under deliver in this area. So during Jupiter's retrograde, he's like, yeah, I want you to get to that level, but you're not there yet. So what can I help you with? Where are your strengths? Where are your weaknesses? I'll send you a teacher. So don't be surprised if over this next five months, you don't see people kind of creeping into your world and they're acting as teachers and educators for you as well. On the 20th, we're going to see the sun moving into the energy of Gemini. Boom, lighting up that fourth house, bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. The 22nd, we welcome in a new moon into this area as well. So this is your chance to plant your seeds of intention in this fourth house area. Are you looking for a different place to live? Do you need to refresh home in your own psychological foundations of what makes you secure what makes you steady right we have to be steady here before we really build something beautiful in the world right so from here where are you looking to like reconnect slow down just have some regrounding rerouting time and you can use this new moon to help you begin that begin the changes that will allow that to happen for you okay now as we close out this month mercury is going to move into the other fellow water sign cancer lighting up your fifth house space so all throughout june we're going to see that the cancer energies of the fifth house are strong for you but it begins here at the end of the month Mercury being here in Cancer, this is really a reconnection to your emotional life, connection to family, connection to the past, connection to things that make you feel secure, connection to your emotions and giving them an intellectual con conception and communication out into the world. So it's almost this place where I feel like if you've been avoiding or you've been kind of indirectly interacting with an emotional process or indirectly interacting with anything that has to do with home even cancer this is a place where mercury is like it's okay let's take some let's make some decisions and let's take some actions that even though they maybe have a huge emotional connection to them is also really good for us going forward it's about joy it's about play it's about children it's about taking a risk it's about beginning something new and ultimately giving yourself the most beautiful expression that's available to you this comes from the work from the fourth house as well all right, Pisces, I think it's going to be a beautiful month. I hope that you will join me all month long and beyond for these beautiful eat and greet collaborations I've got going. We've had Sasha Benedetti here, Nadia Shah, Brian Coulter. Coming up, Patrick Arundel will be here, Terrence Gardino, Gemini Brett. Man, people are lining up and saying yes to come talk with us. And we're not going to just talk about topics. We're going to also teach you some skills that you can apply the techniques to your own astrological practices as well. So I hope to see you there, okay? Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you all my love and I'll see you next month. Bye Pisces.